After producing several videos about fake quotes that you find attributed to philosophers, specifically to Aristotle and to Plato, I did a poll and said, who do you want me to do next? And one of the big winners was Marcus Aurelius, the great Stoic writer and emperor. There's a lot of things that get attributed to him that are actually not by him and then circulated around on the internet. So we're going to look at 10 and actually a bonus 11th egregiously fake quotes that get attributed to Marcus Aurelius. Here's the first one and you've probably seen this in a lot of places. This one got uh, repeated by the Daily Stoic. Everything we hear is an opinion, not a fact. Everything we see is a perspective, not the truth. And the Daily Stoic got suckered just like so many other people. Why is this not a genuine Marcus Aurelius quote? Well, when you see words that really don't show up in ancient thought like fact. That should be a red flag to you right now. There is some sort of connection to Marcus in Meditations Book 2. He says, everything is what you suppose it to be for the words that were addressed to the cynic. Monimus are clear enough and clear to the value of that saying, if one accepts its inner meaning so far as this is true. So there is some sense in which there are references to opinions or perspectives, and Aurelius himself will say in Book 12 at several different points, everything is opinion, but the word that's being translated there as opinion is not the usual doxa or dogmata, right? It's Hupolepsis, which is a very important Stoic term, which doesn't really mean opinion as such. It actually means something like assumption. So, you know, the key there that Marcus wants to make is that this is all up to us. It's within our power. He's not saying anything about relativism along these lines, that there are no things that we can agree upon. So this is clearly not a Aurelius quotation. It's kind of a garble up, and we see that even sites like the Daily Stoic can get suckered into believing and repeating them. Let's take a look at the second one. This one's kind of long. Live a good life. If there are gods and they are just, they will not care how devout you have been, but will welcome you based on the virtues you have lived by. If there are gods but unjust, then you should not want to worship them. If there are no gods, then you will be gone, but will have lived a noble life that will live on in the memories of your loved ones. This is not by Aurelius. This is a, what we can call a hot mess garble of other things that Marcus says at various points. You could view it as a really awful paraphrase of what's going on in book two, chapter 11 of the meditations, where Marcus says, let your every action, word, and thought be those of one who could depart from life at any moment. But taking your leave of the human race is nothing to be feared if the gods exist for they would not involve you in anything bad. If, on the other hand, they do not exist or they do not concern themselves with human affairs, why should I care to go on living in a world devoid of gods or devoid of providence? That is the closest we can find to the quote in Marcus Aurelius's actual meditations, and you can see that there's quite a difference there. This became popular on the internet and keeps circulating around. This third quote is a very short one. Anger cannot be dishonest. It's not actually by Marcus, even though he does say an awful lot of stuff about anger and quotes other people talking about anger. For example, Theophrastus, the friend and successor of Aristotle, who he quotes in book two of the meditations, or rather cites in the meditations, saying that anger is not as bad as plain old desire for physical pleasure. And he says that offenses that are committed through desire are worse or more blamable than those which are committed through anger. And you could, you know, read into that if you wanted to something like 
anger is more honest. But Marcus never actually says that. Who does say that? Well, it's actually coming from a guy named George Robert Back, who first says it in his 1969 book, The Intimate Enemy, and then repeats it in his co-authored book in 1971, Aggression Lab, The Fair Fight Training Manual. Our fourth fake quote is a little bit longer and also rather, you could say, new agey. When you arise in the morning, think of what a precious privilege it is to be alive, to breathe, to think, to enjoy, to love. And again, not by Marcus Aurelius, who does talk at several points about what you should do in the morning, most notably in book two, where he says, remind yourself when you get up in the morning that you're going to face a lot of negative people. And we don't need to go into the whole quotation there. In book five, he's also starting with a first thoughts in the morning. In the morning, when you find yourself unwilling or loath to rise, have this thought at hand, I am arising to to a human being's work. Now, neither of these are remotely like what is being said here. Breathe, think, enjoy, love, a precious privilege to be alive. They're not completely incompatible with Marcus's thought, but it's not Marcus's thought. And indeed, it comes from a book or rather a sort of journal thing entitled For Philistines and Roy Crofters. And this is by an author called The Fra. And and the entry is actually under the new thought. It attributes this passage to both Epictetus and Marcus Aurelius, claiming that they teach a similar gospel to Christ who was just referenced before in that section. So again, not a true quote from Marcus Aurelius's writings. Instead, we've got a much more contemporary thing, and the language should show that to you. Here's another one that is not by Marcus Aurelius, but is attributed to him by somebody else who's quite famous, Leo Tolstoy. And it goes, the object in life is not to be on the side of the majority, but to escape finding oneself in the ranks of the insane. Interestingly, it's coming from Tolstoy's book, Bethink Yourself. But if you go to the 1904 version of it, you're not actually going to find it. You've got to go to the Recollections and Essays version translated in 1946, and then you will find it in chapter 8. Is it by Marcus Aurelius? It is not. Where did Tolstoy get the idea that it was? We don't know. I would like to point out, however, that this does get used in other people's books. For example, Frank McLean's 2009 Marcus Aurelius A Life, where he attributes this to Marcus Aurelius in saying why people like Marcus Aurelius and why they get into him. So he attributes it without providing any citation of the text telling you where it comes from. So he uncritically bought into it and then incorporated it into his own book, which also, since it was published, means that some editors let it slide through. Here we get one that actually does come from ancient times. Each day provides its own gifts. Now, this doesn't come from Marcus Aurelius. It's not found in his meditations, but it is found in Marshall's epigrams in book eight of them in the translation by Walter Charles Allen Kerr. And the Latin for it there is omnis habet sua dona dies. Each day provides its own gifts is a great translation of that, or every single day has its own gifts, presumably, to offer us. Now, later we find it being said, or rather written, in two books by women whose first name is Ruth, Ruth P. Friedman and Ruth Ann Schabacher. Each day provides its own gifts by Friedman, and each day comes bearing its own gifts, followed by untie the ribbon in Ruth Ann Schabacher. And from that, it gets circulated around by a lot of other writers who like that, that sentiment. Did they take it directly from Marshall? We don't really know, but 
It's not by Marcus Aurelius. Now we get to some really funny fake quotes. And what's funny about them is that they are coming from a movie script rather than from the meditations. What we do now echoes in eternity. So this is coming from Gladiator. And it's not said by Marcus Aurelius in Gladiator. It is actually said by Maximus, the main character. Marcus Aurelius is kind of a, a bit player in that movie. And, you know, does this jibe with things that, uh, that Marcus Aurelius actually said? I mean, he does have some references to eternity. You know, for example, in book nine, he says, loss is nothing else than change, but the universal nature delights and change and in obedience to her all things are now done well and from eternity have been done in like form and will be such to time without end and then in book 10 he says whatever is going to happen to you it was prepared for you from all eternity and the implication of causes was from eternity spinning the thread of your being and of that which is incident to it so could there be some sense of like echoes in eternity? Well, kind of. I mean, often Marcus is saying if you think about things in terms of eternity, you realize how little lasting most things, including us, are. So this really doesn't fit Marcus Aurelius, although it is kind of a cool quote for a movie. This is another quote from Gladiator, which is also put in the mouth of Maximus, who is going to claim that Marcus Aurelius, the Marcus Aurelius, who's a character in the movie, said it, death smiles at us all. All a man can do is smile back. And this is in an exchange with Commodus, Marcus Aurelius's terrible son, who is, you know, sort of the arch rival, the antagonist of Maximus. And so Maximus says, I I knew a man once who said, and then he repeats the phrase, and Commodus says, I wondered, did your friend smile at his own death? And Maximus says, you must know he was your father. So he's saying this is by Marcus Aurelius, but this is a fictional Marcus Aurelius who is part of a movie. Now, does Marcus say things kind of like that? Yes, he does. For example, in Meditations Book 2, he says, accept death in a cheerful spirit as nothing but the dissolution of the elements from which each living thing is composed. But he's not saying smiling right there. And we can also think about a passage where there is a reference to smiling. Pass on your way with a smiling face under the smile of him who bids you go. This might be a source of this garbled quotation that was being tapped by the writers. It doesn't say that death smiles at us, though, does it? All it says is the one who bids you go, who could be God for all we know. So definitely not by Marcus Aurelius, the writer of the meditations, but uh, attributed to a movie character. This quote, no man is happy who does not think himself so, is in part derived from Marcus Aurelius. So it's not a totally fake quote or totally made up, but it's a garbled paraphrastic translation, a bad translation, right? The better translation for this would be those who do not observe the movements of their own minds must of necessity be unhappy. And so it's not a reference to being happy. It's actually a reference to being unhappy, kako daimonen, right? To, to be unhappy, to have a bad spirit, a, a spirit of badness, so to speak. And He's not saying that you're not happy because you don't realize that you're happy. He's saying that if you're not observing what's going on in your own mind, soul, personality, you are going to be unhappy. So not a completely fake quote, but something that isn't what Marcus is saying. We have another similarly sloppy translation of what it is that Marcus does say here. A man's worth is no greater than his ambitions. Now, if you actually read the Greek text, there is no reference there whatsoever to ambition, which would be philotimia. Instead, there's references to axios and axia, things of value, things of worth. And a better translation of this would be every person is worth just so much as the things are 
are worth about which they busy themselves, espudakein, right? The things that they are focused upon, the things that they take seriously. So this tells us something about how people value themselves and other things, but it doesn't tell us anything about ambitions. Finally, here's a bonus 11th quote. The opinion of 10,000 men is of no value if none of them know anything about the subject. And again, the language itself should put us on guard. There are references to the opinions of the many, but there are no references whatsoever to 10,000 people in the meditations. There are references to 10,000, but for years or for the numbers of cavalry and infantry that got killed on a battlefield, where does this one come from? We don't really know, but it's definitely not by Marcus. So there you have it, a set of fake quotes that are constantly being reposted, recirculated, treated as if they're true, and now you know that they're fake. And in many cases, you know where they come from. As usual, I'm going to close by giving you some suggestions. You should always exercise healthy suspicion. You shouldn't be reposting fake quotes if you know that they're fake. And you probably shouldn't even justify them by saying, well, they're true in some way. No, they're just fake quotes. So don't do it. And when you see people posting things, demand the sources. Say, where is that actually coming from in Marcus Aurelius or whoever else? And if they can't tell you where, there's a good chance that it could be a fake quote. I would also suggest checking out the website Sententiae Antiquae. They have a whole bunch of articles about fake quotes, and they're doing some really great work in calling out the people who are are constantly you could say, polluting the internet with these.